Hi guys, what's going on? My name is Aisha. Today I will cover everything you need to know about how to approach your first site visit to a new architectural project and what to do when physically there. If this is your first time here and you love architecture and want to learn more about it, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. However, before visiting for the first time, I recommend that you carry out desktop study beforehand as this will provide an important initial understanding of the site and generate far better results and more refined questions once there. The desktop study will also help you to identify the important items of equipment that you will need to take with you to make your trip as successful as possible. It could include a site map, notepad, camera, pen or pencil, tape measure, laser distance meter. What to look for? Once there, there are a whole number of important areas and items that need to be studied and recorded some of which would have already been identified during your desktop study but as a starting point write those following as a checklist and tick them off as they are found so you don't miss anything Where to start? You want to begin communicating your visit as soon as you arrive, as the approach and entrance to your site are just as important as the site itself. If your desktop study didn't highlight the possible routes and methods of transport to and from the site, then this needs to be recorded also. Decommunating your first impression is very important. Ask yourself. What do you see as you enter the site? What do you hear? What do you feel? And what sense are the first to be triggered? You will only get one chance to do this probably and so you need to make it count. And don't forget to include the location of elements you record when noting it down on your map or survey. By the end of your visit, you should barely be able to read what's under all your notes. Write down everything. Moving on from the first impressions, you should plan to walk around the site at least twice, as minimum, to ensure that nothing is missed. So leave enough time to make at least two loops noting down and photographing everything that you feel is relevant, no matter how small. There is nothing worse than getting back to the studio and realizing you forgot to communicate something. In addition to the previous checklist, you firstly walk around the site whilst annotating a site plan, secondly with a camera photographing everything and thirdly with both just in case something has been missed this way we can focus on one task at a time helping to ensure we gather everything we need it can be difficult to identify certain elements and some may only be noticeable from a professional survey such as underground surfaces and precise spot levels but approximations of such locations and heights are a good start 
and can serve as a reminder for further investigations. If accessible, you can of course take your own measurements and so this is where a tab measure and or distance meter will come in handy. Try one of these, tape measure or laser distance meter. What to take with you? Firstly, look at the weather. You won't have a good time if you're not dressed appropriately. And this applies to protecting your notes and equipments as well as yourself. A simple quick check can make or break a visit. Arranging to go on a sunny day will also give you the best site photographs, which could also be used in future presentation material. If the site has potentially dangerous elements, it's likely that you will require personal protection equipment, otherwise known as PPE. So make sure this is organized before setting off. As a minimum, you want to take with you a camera, pen, and map. Google Maps can provide a temporary version. As mentioned before, you will want to make notes and record everything you observe, experience, and hear all over this map. So print out a couple of copies at a usable and convenient size. A camera is essential in the community in the site and the pictures taken during your visit are likely to be used on a daily basis throughout your project. So once again, make sure you document and record everything. Pictures should be taken from all distance, close zoomed in sections of materials and textures along with shots of the side from a distance to include the area as a whole and within its context. Notepads are important for obvious reasons. I prefer an A5 sized pad as this is much easier to carry and hold than an A4 one. Tape measures can be useful, but never go on a site visit without a distance meter. And lastly, if you are visiting on your own, don't forget to tell someone where you will be and take your phone with a charge battery. Briefly, weather check print out what to look for checklist sitemap at least two copies pbe equipment camera notepad pen pencil tape measure laser distance meter scale ruler and phone along with your visit to the site i'll give you a list of the key areas that should be investigated Why is site analysis important? A project's success is built on its relationship to its site and surroundings and therefore by default should always be best book to and based on its location and local characteristics. Every site has a very specific solar orientation, views, good and bad and often a very explicit character and atmosphere. Each one of these areas is an opportunity to generate a meaningful conceptual approach and a way to devise a building's shape, layout, form and materiality. Once established, further analyze of accesses, wind, direction, site levels, vegetation, local context, privacy, services, all this will help cement any early conclusions made. This is the purpose of site analysis and why it's more than simply ticking boxes to meet a criteria. Everything needs to relate back to the foundation established early on during the investigatory period. So that when required it, 
can help provide the answers to the future questions. Good design is generated from strong, simple and well-established concepts. How can site analysis be used? When considering local weather patterns, the aim should be always to provide a building with the best possible access to solar gains, daylight and shelter. This can be achieved through calculated control of the effects of the sun, wind and rainfall through good positioning of opening and roof lines to provide natural light, warmth and shelter throughout the year. To cool a building, its orientation can pull and circulate cool summer air through its plan by allying its long axis with the prevailing wind direction and by providing deep overhangs for shade. During the winter months, its built volumes can provide shelter and create protected external spaces via courtyard. When using the context to influence materiality, look towards the local vernacular of the surrounding buildings. For example, dry stone walls and steel can be used as a modern interpretation of agricultural buildings without mimicking. Ramed earth walls can be used to represent an extension of the site, and if the local soil type is right, could even be built from the land. Weather and time bird creates a nice narrative of changing and growing old with a site. When the site has prominent views, buildings can address the landscape with large framed apertures and big key views and features to specifically draw attention to. Moving between rooms can generate different views and therefore experiences at different times of day, depending on how and when the spaces are used. These ideas are site-specific and only have meaning through being relevant. And this relevancy is generated through knowing your site. You have to know your site in order to design just right. And that was all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope that was useful for you. But before I go, tell me in the comments, do you struggle with site analysis and how was your first visit? If you want to learn more about architecture and you love architecture, please consider subscribing. Have a nice day and good luck.